Mr. Swalwell. Back on the record, Mr. Dearborn. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Swalwell speaking. Back on the record, Mr. Dearborn, I referenced earlier, which I believe is Exhibit 2, a memo that you wrote on August 1st, 2016, about the GOP platform. Do you remember that one? Dearborn, yes, sir, this one here. Swalwell, yeah, and I just want to clear up. You said that the information in the memo came from J.D. Gordon. Dearborn, correct. Swalwell, and that it was pulled from an email that J.D. Gordon had sent you. Dearborn, no. I don't know if I said it was pulled from an email. It may very well have been, but the request came to me. I turned to John Mashburn in our policy shop and the folks that had worked the com convention, and I said, guys, can you lay out the TikTok? Swellwell, okay, Dearborn, because John and I really weren't. We were in the room briefly, but J.D. was in there for the whole time. So it made sense to have J.D. put the memo together. Mr. Swalwell, and I asked our staff to look for any documents in your production to our committee where you could have pulled this from. They didn't see it. Do you mind just going back and checking if you have an email from Mashburn or J.D. that you did pull this from? Mr. Dearborn, on this? Swalwell, yeah. Dearborn, yeah, we can go back and look for that. Mr. Caulfield, sure, but if it came from the campaign, it wouldn't be anything we have access to. Dearborn, oh, yeah, I don't have access to that, and that would have probably been from the campaign. Swalwell, okay. Caulfield, but we'll look, Congressman. Swalwell, sure, this, but this wasn't, was this dictated to you by J.D.? Dearborn, no, I don't believe so. If I remember right, it was just put in like an email form, either in a text of an email or maybe even by a document, and I just slapped my name on it because the request came to me. Swalwell, okay, got it. With respect to Carter Page, in the document that Mr. Stewart was referring to, Rick Dearborn, Production 114, that's the one where you discussed reining in Mr. Page. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, so it sounds like there was a history, at least, of having to rein in Mr. Page that you were familiar with and you referred to in your email correspondence. Is that accurate? Dearborn, I think that's fair. Swalwell, and just to go to the RD-117, the fourth page of this production. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, you stated to Stephen Miller, quote, Carter has had to be reined in before, unquote. What were you referring to? And there's a reference in the email, but are there to the Prime Minister comment? Dearborn, so the Prime Minister comment was the one that I was referencing. Swalwell, okay. Were there any other examples that you recall? Dearborn, I don't remember there being multiple examples. I think I was just trying to make clear that he's had to be reined in before. Swalwell, okay. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, and that email chain also reveals that Carter was directly communicating with Hope Hicks. Is that right? Dearborn, if that's what it reflects. Swalwell, and to your knowledge, was Mr. Page ever in contact with Corey Lewandowski. Mr. Dearborn, I wouldn't know. Mr. Swalwell, 
But Hope Hicks, at that time, was essentially the communications director for the campaign. Is that right? Mr. Dearborn, right. Mr. Swowell, and Mr. Page had direct access to Miss Hicks. Dearborn, I'm not familiar with the nature of that access. Swowell, okay, but you would agree that if Mr. Page is being interviewed by the Washington Post, has direct email access to Miss Hicks, is able to fall on your radar that he was not a low-level volunteer for the campaign. Dearborn, no, I wouldn't agree with that. Swowell, you would agree with that? Dearborn, no, I would not agree with that. Swowell, well, he was on the, he was a senior foreign policy team member, right? When Donald Trump was asked to describe to the Washington Post who was on his senior policy team, he named five individuals. Dearborn, right. Swowell, and Carter Page was one of them. Dearborn, these are the ones. You're talking about the ones that were originally supplied by Sam Clovis. Swowell, well, supplied by Donald Trump to the Washington Post. Dearborn, right. But they came out in batches, correct? Swalwell, yes. Dearborn, you're talking about the original four or five or the whole group. Mr. Swalwell, in a March interview with the Washington Post, candidate Trump was asked, which people are on your farm policy team? And Carter Page was one of five people. Mr. Dearborn, Right. Mr. Swalwell, and in at least this production and other production, we have seen that Mr. Page had access to the highest levels of the campaign. And so I guess my question is, Mr. Dearborn, well, I don't know that, and I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Swalwell, well, you at least know from this production that he's in correspondence with the communications director of the campaign, Miss Hicks. Dearborn, yes. Swalwell, that's page 118. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, where he sends an email to Miss Hicks, a lengthy email to Miss Hicks. Dearborn, right. Swalwell, so I guess my question is, wouldn't you agree that a quote unquote low level volunteer or a you know volunteer for the campaign would not have this type of access to the most senior people of the campaign? Dearborn, a low level volunteer, yes, I'd probably agree with that, but I honestly also can't tell you what kind of access he had. I mean, there's this email from him to Hope Hicks, but I don't think that that makes him some senior advisor to the campaign, from my vantage point. Mr. Swalwell, going back to Mr. Papadopoulos, campaign production 22918, referenced by Mr. Stewart. It's an email, June 24th, from George Papadopoulos to you, about travel reimbursement. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, would you agree that Mr. Papadopoulos in this, so it's 22918. Dearborn, yes, sir, I have it. Swalwell, in this email, Mr. Papadopoulos is expressing two things. One, that he is traveling all over the world. And two, that he's willing to drop his current employer to come work in close proximity to the campaign. Dearborn, yes, sir, he does say he'd be willing to drop his position and come on board. Swalwell, to your knowledge, what was his role during the transition? 
Dearborn, I don't remember. Swowo, and you were the executive director of the transition, right? Dearborn, I was. We had over 400 some odd people, at some point larger than that. Swowo, are there any documents about what his role may be that you could go back and review for us? Dearborn, I don't believe I have access to the transition documents. Mr. Caulfield, I'm sorry, Congressman, can I just clarify something? Mr. Swowell, sure. Caulfield, do you know whether he was on the transition? Dearborn, I don't. Caulfield, okay, so he may not have been on the transition. Dearborn, yeah, I don't really know. Caulfield, but Congressman, we'll check. Mr. Swalwell, okay. Mr. Dearborn, yeah, he easily could have been, but I don't know if he was. Swalwell, okay. Which email were you using when you were working on the transition? Dearborn, transition email. Swalwell, okay. Do you have access to that today? Dearborn, I don't believe I do. Swalwell, okay. On January 20th, 2017, the day of the inauguration, public reports indicate that George Papadopoulos and Rince Priebus met in Washington with Greek Defense Minister Panos Kaminos. Were you aware of that meeting? Dearborn. No, sir. Swowell, public reports indicate that on January 22, 2017, Papadopoulos met with the head of one of Israel's settlement councils, Yossi Dagan, in Washington. Were you familiar with that meeting? Dearborn, no, sir. Swowell, have you discussed anything outlined in Mr. Papadopoulos' statement of offense with Attorney General Sessions? Dearborn, statement of what? I'm sorry. Swowell, are you familiar with Mr. Papadopoulos' statement of offense in his guilty plea? Dearborn, just cursory from the papers. Swowell, Okay, have you discussed any of that or anything about Mr. Papadopoulos' meetings with Russians or Russian cutouts with Attorney General Sessions? Mr. Dearborn, no, sir, nothing other than the comment I shared earlier. Mr. Swowell, on January 27, 2017, Mr. Papadopoulos was interrogated by the FBI. Were you working at the White House that day? Dearborn, January 27th? Swalwell, yes. Dearborn, yes, sir, I would have been. Okay, so Mr. Swalwell, on January 27th, 2017, Mr. Papadopoulos was interrogated by the FBI. Were you working at the White House that day? Mr. Dearborn, January 27th. Swalwell, yes. Dearborn, yes, sir, I would have been. Swalwell, okay. Did you or anyone around you have knowledge on January 27th, 2017, that Mr. Papadopoulos had been approached that day by the FBI. Dearborn, I can only speak for myself, and no, sir, I did not. Swalwell, okay, well, did you hear of any chatter around the White House that a campaign member had been approached by the FBI that day? Dearborn, none. Swalwell, on April 25, 2016, 
Mr. Papadopoulos emailed a senior campaign advisor and said, quote, There was an open invitation by Mr. Putin for Mr. Trump to meet when he is ready, unquote. Were you that senior campaign official? Dearborn, no, I was not. Swowell, do you know who it was? Dearborn, I do not. Swowell, in June, Mr. Papadopoulos asked a high-ranking campaign official about arranging a Putin-Trump meeting, stating, quote, I am willing to make the trip off the record if it's in the interest of Mr. Trump and the campaign to meet specific people, unquote. Were you the person described in this statement of offense as a high-ranking campaign official in that email? Mr. Dearborn, no, sir. Mr. Swowell, do you know who that person is? Dearborn, I do not. Swowell, when did you first meet Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, I've never met him. Swowell, have you ever talked to him on the phone? Dearborn, no. Swowell, when did Senator Sessions first meet Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, I don't know. I mean, that would probably be in the schedule that he would have, that he would keep. Swalwell, well, were you familiar with the senator's contacts with foreign representatives? Dearborn, yes. Swalwell, while you were working as chief of staff. Dearborn, yes. Swalwell, okay, were you familiar that he had a relationship with Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, I don't believe he has a relationship with him. Swalwell, well, I guess. By Senator Sessions' own testimony, they've met at least twice. Dearborn, okay. Swalwell, are you familiar with that testimony? Dearborn, yes. Mr. Swalwell, okay, one of the times that they met was in Senior Sessions' Senate office. Mr. Dearborn, okay. Swalwell, are you familiar with that meeting? Dearborn, I'm not. Swalwell, okay, were you in the office? Dearborn, other than the cursory news about it happening. Swalwell, okay, and your testimony earlier was that you were chief of staff all the way up until noon on January 20th. Dearborn, that's right. Swalwell and Senator Sessions, you're aware, testified to multiple committees that in the fall prior to the election, he met with Ambassador Kislyak at his Senate office. Dearborn, right. Swalwell, were you in the Senate office the day that Ambassador Kislyak came in? Dearborn, the foreign policy would have been, not me. Swowell, okay, but you would have been in the office, right? Dearborn, I may have been physically there. Swowell, okay, and was it your practice to have a handle on the day-to-day -day schedule of the senator? Dearborn, sure. Swalwell, okay, do you recall reviewing that Ambassador Kislyak was coming to Senator Sessions' office that day? Dearborn, I don't recall off the top of my head, but it happened. Mr. Swalwell, would you agree that at that time, in the fall of 2016, that public reports and even reports from our intelligence community had attributed Russia as being responsible for the hacking of Democratic emails. Mr. Dearborn, yeah, I was aware of all that. Blank, five minutes, Mr. Swalwell. Mr. Swalwell, we're going to the 30-minute rule. Blank, oh, I'm sorry, my fault. Swalwell, and so, Mr. Dearborn, just to have you think back,
it would probably be pretty memorable if it's in the news and our intelligence community is assessing that Russia is involved in our election. And then right before the campaign, Russian's ambassador to the United States is visiting your boss. Wouldn't you agree? Dearborn, if he was the only ambassador visiting, yes. Swalwell, right. Dearborn, that would be memorable. Swalwell, who are other ambassadors that visited in that time period? Dearborn, dozens. Swalwell, okay, do you remember from which countries? Dearborn, you could probably pick a country and they were meeting with the senator. Swalwell, okay. Dearborn, I'm not being flip about that. Swalwell, no, I understand. Dearborn, I just... Swalwell, Mr. Swalwell, well, let me go back to April 26, 2016. Do you remember an event at the Mayflower Hotel hosted by the Center for the National Interest? Mr. Dearborn, I do. Swalwell, were you part of the preparation for that event? Dearborn, I was tangentially. Yes, sir. Swalwell, who else was a part of it? Dearborn, Dimitri Symes, who I think runs the center. Swalwell, and did Senator Sessions know Dimitri Symes? Dearborn, not very well. Swalwell, okay. Were you aware of any meetings that they had before that event? Dearborn, I'm really not aware. But if there's a document that's produced that says that they met in some year at some foreign policy conference, I wouldn't be shocked by it. Swalwell, right. Were you aware of any? Did Senator Sessions and Dimitri Symes communicate by phone? Dearborn, for that event. Swalwell, just prior to that event, were they ever in phone contact? Dearborn, they may have talked, but I don't believe that the senator was involved with the logistics of that event. Swalwell, was Jared Kushner involved in the logistics of that event? Dearborn, he may have been. Swalwell, Okay, were you working with the Farm Policy Advisory Team in preparation for that event? Dearborn, J.D. Gordon would have been. Swalwell, okay, did you attend that event? Dearborn, I did. Swalwell, okay, did you attend with Senator Sessions? Dearborn, no, I came separate from Senator Sessions. Swalwell, who came with Senator Sessions? Dearborn, Sandy Luff, our legislative director and kind of our foreign policy person. Swalwell, okay, how do you spell that last name? Dearborn, L-U-F-F. -F. Swalwell, okay, is that a man or woman? Dearborn, it's a woman. Swalwell, okay. Was she there in part for policy, but also in part to be a body man for the senator? Dearborn, yeah, she was staffing him at a foreign policy event that a member would normally attend. Swalwell, right. And was it typical that if you had a staffer assigned to the senator, that the staffer would remain attached throughout the event? Dearborn, very close by. Yes, sir. Swalwell, right. Take notes. Follow up with people the senator met with? Question mark. Dearborn, if notes were necessary, yes, sir. Swalwell, okay. Did you see the senator at that event? Dearborn, I did. Swalwell, okay. Was there any pre-event meetings or receptions? Dearborn, there was. Swalwell, okay, what was that? Dearborn, there was a small reception. 
VIPs, members of Congress, foreign policy experts, relatively brief, 20 minutes maybe. Swalwell, okay, where was that? Dearborn, it was in a room separate from the large ballroom that the speech was delivered in. Swalwell, was the ballroom on the first floor of the Mayflower, the entry level? Qu- question mark. Dearborn, seems like it was. Swalwell, okay. And was the room also the side room? Dearborn, same level. Right. Swalwell, okay. Senator Sessions attended that side room reception. Dearborn, he attended the reception along with several members of Congress. Swalwell, okay. Who were others that you recall being at that reception? Dearborn, I think Mike Kelly was there, Tom Marino. I remember talking to both of them. I know that we had a list of folks who we were trying to encourage to join us. There were others, I think, that did attend. I don't have the full list, but my guess is it's in notes somewhere, or you know it. I don't know. Mr. Swalwell, well, did you at the time have a list of who was at the reception? Mr. Dearborn, we probably had put together our... So we had kind of a House and a Senate team, and they would have probably put together the list of individuals that they were trying to recruit to come listen to the speech. Yeah. Swalwell, and oftentimes schedulers will prepare for their boss a list of who will be at certain meetings. Was that prepared in this case for Senator Sessions? Dearborn, we were never really that good at that, so... Swalwell, was candidate Trump at that reception? Dearborn, if I remember right, he kind of popped in and kind of waved and then popped out. He was there for no period of time, really. Swalwell, okay, was Ambassador Kislyak at that reception? Dearborn, he may have been, but I wasn't really working the room as much. I was actually bringing members to the room, was really kind of what I was doing, was trying to facilitate. Swalwell, if it was prearranged for Ambassador Kislyak to be at that reception, is that something that would have been reflected in notes that you referenced earlier? Dearborn, no because that would have been handled probably by CNI. Swalwell, okay, who decided who got in that room? Dearborn, well, CNI hosted the event, and we asked them to put together the individuals. Can it be a group of, you know, foreign policy thinkers? And so they put the group together. We did invite our National Security Working Group to come. Some of them attended. Mr. Swalwell, was Mr. Papadopoulos in that room? Mr. Dearborn, I don't recall. Swalwell, did he attend the event? Dearborn, I don't know if he attended or not. I really don't know. Swalwell, was Mr. Page at the event? Dearborn, I don't believe so. We never saw Mr. Page at anything, so... Swalwell, was Mr. Symes in the reception room? Dearborn, he would have been for some period of time, yes. Swalwell, okay, did you see any other ambassadors in the reception room that you'd recognized. Dearborn, so I'm not like an embassy row kind of fellow. Swalwell, yeah. Dearborn, so I wouldn't have probably. They could have been all around me, but I wouldn't have necessarily recognized them. 
Swowo. Okay. Was Richard Burt involved in the planning? Dearborn. He may have been. I recall references to him by Mr. Symes. Swowo. Were you involved in the drafting of the president's speech for the main event? Dearborn. I wasn't. Swowell, do you know who was? Dearborn, it's possible that Stephen Miller was, and he may have checked in with J.D. and received information from other individuals, maybe even from the National Security Working Group. I just don't know. Swowell, did you see any drafts prior to the speech being... Dearborn, yeah, I saw some drafts. Swowell, okay, were those sent around by email? Dearborn, probably. Swowell, okay, and is that something you could go back and look for? Dearborn, I don't have access to that email account. Swowell, was that the campaign email account? Dearborn, it would have been the campaign account, yes, sir. Caulfield, we'll check anyway, Congressman. Swowell, sure, appreciate that. Dearborn, sure, sure, happy to. Swowell, now in the main room for candidate Trump's speech, were there seating or assignments or was it open seating? Dearborn, we put members of Congress up front and then behind that it was they just filled it up as far as I now I know. Now, Dimitri and CNI may have had a very orchestrated seating chart, but we weren't responsible for that. It wasn't our logistical responsibility. Swowell, where did Senator Sessions sit? sit? Dearborn, I think he sat up front along with the other members of Congress. Swalwell, okay. Do you recall if Ambassador Kislyak attended the main event? Dearborn, I really don't. Swalwell, okay. Dearborn, yeah. Swalwell, did Senator Sessions ever talk to you after the event about any interactions with Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, no. Swalwell, were there any events after the reception? Dearborn, no, sir. I think the, oh, yeah, the speech came after the reception. Mr. Swalwell, I'm sorry, after the speech, were there any events? Dearborn, no, after the speech was done, there were a lot of TV cameras. People were interviewing I believe Sessions was interviewed and some members of Congress. Just reaction to the speech, that kind of thing. But then the room dispersed. Swowell, okay. So up until this point, it's your testimony that you couldn't have picked Ambassador Kislyak out at Pistol Point. Dearborn, probably not. Swowell, okay. And up until this point, you had never heard Senator Sessions ever mention Ambassador Kislyak. Dearborn, no. Swalwell, okay. Did you go to the RNC? Dearborn, pardon? Swalwell, the convention. Dearborn, I did. Swalwell, okay. And did you ever see Ambassador Kislyak? at the convention. Dearborn, I did not. Swowell, okay, were you with Senator Sessions throughout the convention? Dearborn, I was not. I saw him sporadically. Swowell, okay, who was staffing Senator Sessions at the time? Dearborn, Sandy Luff. Swowell, okay, the same person as... Dearborn, yes, sir. Swowell, okay. Did Sandy Luff, after the Mayflower event, 
ever mention anything to you about a meeting or an interaction between Senator Sessions and Ambassador Kislyak. Dearborn, no, sir. Swalwell, okay. Did Sandy Luff ever express to you any meeting that Senator Sessions had with Ambassador Kislyak in Cleveland at the convention? Dearborn, no, sir. Swalwell, okay. Did Senator Sessions ever mention to you any meeting that he had with Ambassador Kislyak at the convention? Dearborn, no, sir. Swalwell, was it practice for Sandy Luff to take notes while she was staffing the senator of who he interacted with and who followed up with? Mr. Dearborn, not like at a reception setting or at a speech normally, unless she was taking notes herself about the speech that she wanted to share with him later. But I don't know that she did that. Mr. Swowa, was Senator Sessions the type of member who would meet somebody, interact with them, and then follow up with, you know, a nice-to-see-you note or some sort of correspondence? Dearborn, if they were his constituents, sure. Swowa, okay. What was his practice with foreign dignitaries? Dearborn, not to my knowledge. Swowell, now in the fall. Yeah, go ahead. Dearborn, if they talked about something that really piqued his interest, would he send them a note? Question mark. He might have. But I don't think that was his custom. Swowell, in the fall, Senator Sessions, as I referenced earlier, has testified that Ambassador Kislyak came to his office. Who would have staffed Senator Sessions for a meeting like that? Dearborn, probably Sandy Luff and Pete Landrum. Swowell, how do you spell Landrum? Dearborn, L-A-N-D-R-U-M. Swowell, okay. So at a typical meeting with an ambassador, based on your knowledge as chief of staff, would have been those two individuals, the senator and whoever the ambassador brought. Dearborn, right. Swowo, okay. And typically, would notes be taken in a meeting like that? Mr. Dearborn, I guess it would just depend on the nature of the conversation, but sometimes I would assume. Mr. Swowo, Okay, well, of all the ambassadors in the world, you'd agree, even, as you said, not being an embassy row guy, that a meeting with the Russian ambassador is a pretty important meeting. Dearborn, about the same level as meeting with the Chinese ambassador or the ambassador from Great Britain. Uh Uh-huh, sure. Swowell, all three of them have seats on the Security Council. Dearborn, yeah. Swowell, probably important. Dearborn, sure. Swowell, how would we find out if there were notes taken by the two individuals who staffed Senator Sessions when Ambassador Kislyak visited in the fall of 2016? Dearborn, I guess you could ask them directly. Swowell, okay. Were notes, so all the way up to the day the lights were turned off in the Senate office, as you and Senator Sessions transitioned into the administration, what happened with the office's correspondence and documents? Dearborn, so there would have been an archivist that took care of that. But, interestingly, under the transition law that we passed, I was a detailee from the Senate to the transition, so I physically wasn't there when we shut the office down. Swowell, who was responsible for shutting the office down? Dearborn, probably Peggy Hanrahan and whoever was hired to come in and help us do that. 
the archivist. Mr. Swalwell, and your testimony, Mr. Dearborn, is that, even all the way up to the fall meeting with Ambassador Kislyak, so from the Mayflower to Cleveland to even that meeting, you were not familiar with any meetings, those or anything in between, that Senator Sessions had with Ambassador Kislyak. Mr. Dearborn, no. Swalwell, Senator Sessions, did he ever mention to you at all, all the way up until Election Day, any relationship or meetings he had taken with Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, no. Swalwell, so if someone had told you on November 8th that Senator Sessions had met two or maybe three times with Ambassador Kislyak, that would have been a complete surprise to you that they even interacted. Dearborn, I mean, if they gave me the context. I mean, there was a meeting with diplomats at the convention. Could he have been there at that? Sure. Swalwell, okay. Dearborn, he was in the office once. So were there two meetings? Sure. So that wouldn't have surprised me. Swalwell, okay. And your testimony is you don't know the genesis of the relationship between Ambassador Kislyak and Senator Sessions, meaning like the first time they met or how often they corresponded. Dearborn, no, I don't know the history of it at all. Blank, five minutes, sir. Mr. Swalwell, were you familiar in your capacity on the campaign or even the transition with any meetings that Jared Kushner had taken with Ambassador Kislyak? Mr. Dearborn, no, I wasn't familiar with that. Mr. Swalwell, how about any meetings that General Flynn had taken with Ambassador Kislyak? Dearborn, I wouldn't be familiar with that either. Swalwell, so who was the senator's blank at, that, at the time? Mr. Dearborn, blank. Mr. Swalwell, okay. And if any ambassadors wanted to meet with the senator, is that who they would typically go through? Dearborn, usually they'd go through their embassy and connect with our scheduler, and she would probably talk to our foreign policy team. What do they want to talk about? Issues relating to their country and foreign policy. Okay, bring them in. Swalwell, once Donald Trump was elected president, were you familiar with any requests by the ambassadors or his staff to meet with Senator Sessions? Dearborn, Kislyak, Swalwell, yes, post-election. Dearborn, no. Swalwell, if Kislyak requested a meeting with Sessions. Dearborn, no. Swalwell, all the way up to, as you sit here now, have you ever discussed with Senator Sessions or Attorney General Sessions any contacts he had with Ambassador Kislyak? Mr. Dearborn, we had one conversation about whether or not he actually ever met with him at Mayflower. Neither one of us believed that he did. Mr. Swalwell, when did that occur? Dearborn, I don't remember when that occurred, to be honest. Probably about the same time that stuff came out, is my guess. And it would have been mostly in passing. Swalwell, was that a face-to-face -face interaction? Dearborn, probably, yeah. Swalwell, do you remember? Dearborn, I think so. I think it was at a Sessions alumni event at one of the hotels nearby or something. Swalwell, and what did he say to you? Dearborn, he said, do you remember me meeting with that fellow? And I said, I don't. He says, yeah, I don't either. Now, that... I'm not talking about anything that would happen in the Senate office, 
but any kind of separate meeting at the Mayflower, neither one of us remembered anything like that. Swalwell, how much time? Blank, about three minutes. Swalwell, I want to go to the email correspondence between you and Mr. Clay. Dearborn, yes, sir. Swalwell, help me understand who was Mr. Clay to you. Dearborn, Mr. Clay was a fellow American to me. Swalwell, okay, so you had never met with him face to face. Dearborn, no. Swalwell, to your knowledge, had Senator Sessions ever met him face to face? Dearborn, no. Swalwell, what does he mean by switching hats? Or, I'm sorry, that was Mr. Erickson. So how about Paul Erickson? Had you ever met him face to face? Dearborn, I did one time when he came in into announce when he came in to announce himself and wanted to see the chief of staff in our Senate office. Swalwell, so he came in uninvited. Dearborn, yep. Swalwell, okay. Did you come out and meet him? Dearborn, I did. I came. I come out and meet all kinds of people. Swalwell. Did you have any inkling of who he was when he came in unsolicited, uninvited? Dearborn, no clue. Swalwell, now that's an interesting practice only because, you know, in a Senate office with how many people in Alabama? How many people live in Alabama? Dearborn, 4.7 million. Is that right? Swalwell, so, Dearborn, anyone that stepped in that door from the state of Alabama, I would meet with. Swalwell, okay. Dearborn, every single person. Sw Mr. Swalwell, and he was from the state of Alabama. Mr. Dearborn, I don't believe he was. Swalwell, so it sounds like you would meet with just any person who would step in and say, I want to see the chief of staff. Dearborn, I'm sure he probably stepped in with some air of authority to young staffers that are at the reception desk saying, this gentleman says he has to talk to the chief of staff and it's about, I don't know, transition or Trump or whatever. Swalwell, yeah. Dearborn, and so we try to be very clear. I was the designee in the office, all right? I'll go out and talk. You know, every congressional Senate office has a political designee. Swalwell, what month was that? Dearborn, I honestly can't remember. I can't remember if it was before or after the... I don't know if it was before or after the convention, but I want to think it was after, but I'm just not sure. Blank. One minute, sir. Mr. Swalwell. Okay, so the email titled Kremlin Connection. Paul Erickson to you. That was on May 10th, 2016. Is that right? Dearborn. Okay, if you say it was. Swalwell. I'm just asking, just to refresh your recollection. M Mr. Dearborn, okay. Mr. Swalwell, so when he sent the email and said, quote, hi, Rick, unquote. Mr. Caulfield, can you get us the bait stamp number for that, please? Blank, I believe it was handed out earlier. Blank, 78. Mr. Dearborn, oh, here it is. Mr. Caulfield, thank you. Dearborn, May 10th, right? Swalwell, Mr. Swalwell, was this email sent after he had come unannounced, uninvited to the office? Dearborn, that's a great question, and I really don't know. I don't know the timing sequence of that, but I didn't. I don't know if I would have put two and two together on that. Blank. That's time, Mr. St Swalwell. Mr. Swalwell, thanks. Mr. Conway, Chris, do you have questions? Mr. Stewart of Utah, 
just, I think, very briefly, a lot of conversations, and I think there's a bit of confusion, I'd like to just clarify with your general experience, if we could.